Welcome everyone to another episode of the Bearded IT Dad, where we give you advice and insight on how to grow your career in the IT field. My name's Dakota, and today we have a very special a live stream for you. We are talking about how to grow and advance your career in the IT field. And today we have several very special guests with us. First off, let me introduce each one of them and we'll get to it. Uh, our very first guest is an instru uh, instructional designer uh, with INE who specializes in certifications, adult learning, and creating contact uh, content for that engages multiple intellects. Uh, her her experience in teaching and education and instructional design provides her with a unique position that she uses to shape the creation of INE products. Please welcome Amanda to the live stream. Hey, thanks for having how's, me. Absolutely, how's it going today? It's going pretty good, nice weather. So happy to be here, excited to get talking about stuff today. Absolutely. All right. Well, our next guest has 25 plus years of experience in the field, uh, has held several roles all the way from entry level to C level positions, and is also the creator of the IT Lifer channel is RF Kong. Uh, welcome to the channel. How's it going? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh there we go. About welcome. <laughs> oh, not a problem. You can't Gotta have a new technology. situation, uh, you know, post COVID, right? It's, it's the most common thing right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sorry about that, but thanks for having me in. Hello, Amanda. Hey, good to see you. Uh, well, our next guest is one of the creators and hosts of the So You Want to Be an IT podcast. Uh, they've interviewed industry experts that give amazing advice about starting and advancing their career or your career in the IT field. Welcome, Pat Allen, to the show. Welcome, Pat. How's it going? Hey, guys. How you doing? I'm happy hey, to be here. Let's rock and roll. Yeah, it's a great idea, to Dakota. Good to see you again. Absolutely. Uh, one of our next guests uh, is uh, the C host and CEO of the Learn Cybersecurity uh, channel. She has hosted several Capture the Flag events and works as an information system specialist. Please welcome Allie from Learn Cybersecurity. Welcome, Allie. Hi, happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. And our final guest, who has 25 plus years experience as well, uh, is the creator of the Big Bald Azure Guy YouTube channel, a Microsoft certified trainer, and uh, currently a principal cloud architect with Trace3. Welcome, Corey, to the show. How's it going? Hey, guys. How you doing today? Hey, Corey. Well, these are our wonderful guests we've brought on today, and we are going to talk about how to grow your career in the IT field. And I, I feel so privileged to have such a wealth of knowledge here among me today. Um, you guys have been really inspirational, and uh, you guys, each one of you does something in the IT field to help people grow their careers, and that's what I'm all about. So uh, with that said, I kind of want to dive right on into... Um, one of the most popular questions I get and kind of what my channel is all about is making the career change to the IT field. And it takes it takes a special person to kind of make that leap of faith into the unknown. Um, I know a lot of people come into the career field with zero to no knowledge. What is the best way to make that career change? Um, Pat, let's go ahead and start with you, uh, since you kind of uh, also specialize in this as well. What do you? What are your thoughts on this? Uh, you put me on the spot right off the bat. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no bullpen, nothing. Right into the game. No, nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think, and I think you said it best. We, we, uh, we specialize in you know talking directly to uh, you know the college graduate or you know out of high school uh, or you know sometimes the mid level you know career folks looking for a change, right? They're going from career A and really like tinkering with with IT and, and PCs and things of that nature. And they're like, hey, I can make a career out of this. So uh, I, I, you, know, you see all, all walks of life. And we just had um, a couple months ago, the, the show's kind of on hold now since my wife and I just had our second kid. So life is just kind of crazy here. But um, we had uh, Zach from IT Career Questions on and his YouTube channel is is booming and i was and i asked him i said hey i said what's like like what's your you know where's your niche like who's watching you sort of thing and we actually looked it up live on the podcast he's like ah, i you know i haven't checked in a while let's look live and i'm like okay let's go let's do it and he said it was he, he actually gets a lot of older folks like 65 and older like looking at his youtube channel and that blew me away i was like i did not expect that at all i, that, I thought that was sort of you know the bottom of the 
bottom of the wrong sort of thing, right or wrong. That's just I don't know where my mind was in that in that aspect. I just you would think that IT is towards a younger crowd, I guess. You know, it's it's hot, right? Yeah, it, it's hot out of high school. It's hot in college, right? Everybody, you know, everybody's getting a uh, comp side degree, whatever it is. Uh, cybersecurity, uh, you know, Ali in your in your lane there. Uh, everybody's got this, you know, cyber or trying to get a cybersecurity uh, degree. So it, it's 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 really hot. It, there really is. It's for everybody, all walks of life. There's no. You know, there's no prerequisites for any of this stuff. You, you have an interest in it. You have a drive for it. The, the opportunities will come, right? And I think, I think in today's world, and we sort of talked about this too. Um, I think in today's world, EQ or emotional intelligence is just as important as IQ, right? The actual tech, hard nuts, bolts sorts of things. So, I think, um, especially for folks that are starting in or trying to crack in, whether no matter what specialty that is. Uh, 95% of it, you're going to have to start on a help desk somewhere. That That's just the nature of things. So cyber may be a little different, um, you know, because it's so hot right now. It's white hot. Um, but I think if you have the drive and the knowledge and the, you know, the will to listen and kind of, you know, scrape off the top of the uh, of the more seasoned vets in the field, uh, I think um, I, I, I think you're going to go places. I really do. I think if you learn how to talk to people from a customer service perspective, the technical things will come as your career starts to grow and move in the vertical, you know, hockey stick, you know, for, for that, uh, for the term out there. So yeah. I, I think, I think starting at the bottom uh, with the, with the customer service skills, learn how to talk to people is a huge one, especially on the help desk. Got to know how to talk to people, or at least get them to do things um, you want them to without making them feel like an idiot for lack of better term. So that's a big one. And like I said, the, the, the technical things will come as you start to round out your career and start to kind of focus in on a specialty as you move up the ladder. Absolutely. Now, uh, would any of you else would like to chime in on, you know, what it takes to really make that uh, it's a huge leap for some people. Um, I know when I entered the IT career field, I took like a $20,000 a year pay cut, but I knew this is what I wanted to do. Well, do you, any of you have any advice for people out there looking to make the change? Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in if you don't mind. Um, the biggest, the nice thing about IT is it's, it's so wide open to anybody. I mean, it doesn't matter, like you said, your age, you can be in your teens, you can be in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever. Um, what we've seen nowadays, and gone are the days when I was training, You had, there were no CBT courses. There was no online. We're talking 2,400 baud modems. Um, there was no online training. The accessibility is there for everybody to go on there and learn. Whether you're using something like INE, where Amanda's at, or I used to teach at uh, A-Cloud Guru and Linux Academy and now Cloud Skills, so much stuff's over at INE actually right now. Um, what I'm trying to do with what I'm doing with my, my channel is to show that anybody can jump into cloud. I've been an Azure career coach for a couple of years now. I've got friends who are former police officers and SWAT officers and truck drivers who are now DevOps engineers. Um, and I mean, they were making as a cop, I think $65,000 a year all in, including overtime. And now they're making 150 after about 150 a year after about eight, nine months of really hard studying and a promotion. Um, plus with IT, if you're willing to put the work in, the money will be there. You may have to take a pay cut to go into IT, start up and help desk, junior admin, things like that. But if you're willing to put in the effort, put in the time, the time management that it takes to do things, most good managers will recognize talent and you will, you will advance rapidly through the ranks. Uh, it's just one of those things that what you get in, you typically get back as well. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to teach people. It's also not necessarily um, what you know, technically, it's also who you know, which is why I encourage networking. Soft skills are a major component. How to interview, how to talk to people, how to talk to clients. I do role play with my uh, with my uh, students. Uh, I'm playing. I'll, I'll be a pain in the butt customer sometimes, and I want to explain to them. I mean, oh, I need all this and all this. I want them to explain to me what they can give me in the cloud, things like that. Now, I've I've done the whole on-prem system engineer, system architect role, and I graduated the cloud probably seven eight years ago, and I've been doing this for a while. And I'm not just the big bald Azure guy. I'm now the big bald cloud guy because I've had to rapidly become cloud agnostic. I'm learning AWS and GCP now. So I'll have to kind of rebrand my channel here shortly. Um, but what I'm trying to do when I interview people like Anthony James and Mike Fife or people like that is show them that anyone can do this. All it takes is a serious commitment on your part. It involves time management and it involves also an agreement with the people who are important in your life, whether it's your family, your wife, your husband, your kids, your, your nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, whoever, I don't care. They need to realize that it's going to take some time on your part. There will be some sacrifices, but in the long run, it is worth it. Yeah. 
I'd like to jump into Dakota, if I may. So for anyone out there who's watching who might be from a completely different field, welcome to my life over the past two years. Welcome to the space. Um, exactly echoing what everyone said, I think there's a couple key things that I did as I transitioned into the IT space that might be helpful for those who like steps. I'm a step person. I'm very linear. Um, so kind of what we talked about before, there's a lot of different avenues you can take when you're breaking into the IT world. So many more than you would even begin to imagine. So do your research. Figure out what's out there. Take a look at different platforms. Take a look at different companies, different job postings. There's so much variety out there. So see what interests you. Um, make a list of those transferable skills. What do you already have to offer? Everyone has a unique experience. So figuring out what that is and determining where those gaps are, that's your first big step. Once you're done with that, I would highly recommend looking into you know, some of those courses we've been talking about, whether you like books, coaches, especially. We talk about the importance of networking here. Get yourself a mentor. Get plugged into the community. Listen to podcasts. Listen to like this awesome channel. Um, so there's a lot to be learned from the community, and what I'm finding is the more you talk to people, the more you connect, um, the more you really immerse yourself into this environment, the quicker you're gonna learn, the more you're gonna network, and the easier it's gonna be to make that transition and make some of those difficult choices in terms of what round to take. So for those who are breaking in, you're not alone. I'm right there with you, but it's well worth the transition. And I, if I and can I'd also add, add some... to that too. Sorry, go, oh. ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. No, please, go ahead. Um, I just one of the things that Amanda said, I just want to emphasize too about getting involved in the community and what that looks like. And I get a lot of questions about how do I get involved in the community and how do I make those connections with those people? It's really as simple as, you know, whatever social media platform you're using, follow the hashtags or the, um, the different um, LinkedIn groups or Discord groups that have the areas that you're interested in, if it's cybersecurity, if it's coding, whatever it is, and just start adding those into your regular feeds so that you can see what's happening, uh, who's doing what, and start introducing yourself to those people like, oh, I'm interested in this. I have a question about this. And it's just a really great way to get involved and get the conversation going and start learning about what you know, what you don't know, who you know, who you don't know, so on and so forth. So on and so forth. So that's what I would I would recommend if you want to start getting involved in the community. So that's what I did. Yeah, I, I wanted to say that um, you know when when people think about joining uh, IT, it's always that stereotypical uh, idea that it's you know it's a guy with a with a server in a basement trying to tinker with things, right? Um, but I got to say, IT has changed, right? Um, it's not just those technical people. Um, so if you're coming from another field, there's also, you know, uh, IT needs business analysts, they need project managers, they need ITSM folks, process, uh, you have people who are account managers, sales, there's a lot of areas of IT that are not necessarily hardcore technical. So um, I had a, one friend, he, he spent like, you know, 20 plus years in, in construction. He had an accident and he had to change um, into a different field. He chose IT. But you know, in the beginning, he, he wasn't quite sure what to do. And um, he didn't quite even understand how to do things. And I told him, well, you know, you could go into project management as an IT person. And I gave him analogies about how he used to construct buildings. Now think of the same thing, uh, how you construct, let's say, a, you know, a server farm or something um, more IT related. Um, but my point is, you can have transferable skills from other areas into IT, and it doesn't necessarily have to be hardcore programming or anything like that. So there's, there's a look at what you have in the past and try to leverage as much as you can. That way you are only having to learn what you need to get your foot in the door and then slowly move up. Great advice. And uh, I, my next question is, a lot of people understand they want to be in like some sort of tech related job. They know they want to be in tech, but don't know what the different job paths quite are. Um, you know, I, I'd like to hear from you guys, you know, the different opportunities for kind of that entry level job path uh, into the IT field. Who, who wants to go first? <laughs> I can jump in there. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Mine will be a little bit of a different perspective. So I appreciate, RF. you know, you mentioned that there is different ways to get into the tech industry that you might not think about. That is my journey. Um, so I actually started as an instructional designer and had a very, very just extensive education background. So teachers oftentimes are groups of people who want to transition into tech, especially recently because of this COVID pandemic. And they look at it like, oh, I have these transferable skills. 
Absolutely. Um, so if you don't want to get quite into the practitioner level, but you still want to be in that field and learn as you, you know, get that experience, HR is a great place to start. Recruiting, um, sales, instructional design, for example, uh, client support and help desk we mentioned. So, you know, it's not just that, that basic standard path per se that's unique to maybe cyber or networking or cloud, um, but it's a great way to get your foot in the door and to start learning the terminology, the jargon, the concept. So you're taking all of this information in, you're learning from the best while you're contributing to that to that field in a different capacity. For me, I found that on this journey, it's been extraordinarily rewarding. It's been able, it's allowed me to connect the things I love most, which is helping people learn, um, but also doing that in a very technical way and having a viable product to look at. So for those who might not want to go down a very, um, traditional um, segmented path in one of those specific learning areas, there's a whole world out there of different ways to get involved from more of a business standpoint. So take a look into those as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that one. Um, bottom line is take a look at the skills you have. I mean, if, if you're gone are the days of, I, I call it the guys like the Big Bang Theory, people you would not put in front of customers. You don't put a Sheldon in front of a customer. You don't put a, you need people who can speak to people. Uh, and, and that's kind of what, like, I like to move around when I'm talking. I like to do things like my wife, she's the one responsible for that. I married a North Jersey Italian girl, so I always thank her for that one. Thank you, dear. But it, it's funny. I mean, I used to be the really shy guy in the back corner of the room, and now you can't shut me up. And I want, when I hire people, I look for people who have passion, energy, even if they're brand new. What transferable skills do they have? Are they good on an interview? Are they good in front of a customer? Do they have good organizational skills? Can they write? Maybe you maybe you get brought in as a documentation expert, uh, where you get to learn if you're really good at writing documentation, things like that. I've seen people come from legal backgrounds into IT. I've seen people kind of like who are paralegals. I've even had a lawyer who's come into IT after leaving being a lawyer for ten plus years. Um, police officers are very analytical, things like that. They have the guys are artificial intelligence specialists now. Um, as Amanda said, it's look at what your skills are. Look, you don't have to follow a regimented path if you don't want to. It's a very wide open. If you like Linux, take a deep dive into Linux. Watch some YouTube channels. Go on to uh, sites like INE who have learning pathways to learn step by step, start to finish. But once you hit a point where you find something you really like, do a deep dive on that. I mean, that's how I got into DevOps and uh, cloud security. I'm like, this seems really cool. And I just went down that rabbit hole. And once you get there, you can't get out sometimes. It's so fun. Um, you got to be careful. I mean, you don't want to dive too deep if you don't want to be a specialist. But I mean, the job I'm at now, I mean, I specialize in networking, security, and DevOps. However, I'm a jack of all trades. I'm mid-level on almost everything else because after 25 years of experience, I've just accumulated that. But you don't need to go in there. I mean, and if you don't want to shoot for help desk to begin with and you can find someone higher, great, do it. I have people who walk in as junior DevOps engineers because they learned Python, they learned AWS, and they hopped on as a junior guy. Uh, it all is a matter of what are you going to put into it? And I tell everybody the same thing. If you're going to put a lot in, you're going to get a lot out. Yeah, I'll, I think there's I'll also second that. Sorry, Arf, go ahead. Oh, no, I was saying, I think there's also an element of um, be careful and being focused, right? Because IT is mm -hmm. such a vast uh, field that one day you want to be a security expert, the next day you want to be designing mm -hmm. uh, software for Facebook, right? Um, which is fine. You can do that. You can do those career transitions. But when you're starting off, really figure out what you want to do and then be really laser focused in getting there. Once you have your foot in the door, you can then actually see where else you can grow. So don't be haphazard with, with your time and your effort and money. Uh, figure out what you want to do and then find mm -hmm. out the spots that will help you get there. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I'll, I'll second or third that, depending on how many people we've, we've talked to. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I... I, I agree. And, and for example, early on in the podcast, we actually talked to Christopher Reese, who is a Pluralsight instructor. Um, he was a uh, he was a secure. His whole family was uh, police um, for, for for decades. And then he uh, in his town, I think he's outside of Atlanta, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, at, you know, he was part of the forensic department. And then he basically said, OK, I'm going to make the jump into into IT. And, and he's been in IT ever since. So there's a prime example of somebody that's, you know, sort of taken the leap and whatnot. And and shameless plug for Chris, because he's a great guy. He, his Security Plus uh, cert 
uh, on Plural Site is phenomenal. So if anybody's got any, any uh, you know, any drive towards security, uh, that Chris is a great place to start. He he really does a nice job there. So, um, but yeah, I, I think I think that's uh, I, I think Corey, you hit it on the head as far as you know breaking in. And, and I also wanted to kind of mention. Uh, Ali, so, something that you said earlier about getting into the community, right? You know, I've, I've been a network guy since since high school. That's all I've done. I've been in the network space, um, Cisco mainly, um, that sort of thing. But uh, I've sort of taken a, a flyer on some of the cybersecurity stuff just because of the, you know, the transitions and, and sort of where the field is going. Um, but following people on LinkedIn, that's a big one. Like LinkedIn is huge for especially people that don't have any particular um, experience or just looking into it, get on LinkedIn. I don't care what your profile looks like. Get on LinkedIn, follow those guys and gals, right? Neil Bridges being one of them, Josh Mason, um, Jerry Auger, all those guys. Actually, shout out to Neil Bridges. He's actually one that gave me confidence <clears throat> to start the podcast. He's like, just just do it. People will come. So he is phenomenal mm-hmm. in that space. And he does, you know, he does his um all his live streams and stuff like that here too on YouTube. But um you know, follow those follow those guys and gals that that just have a wealth of knowledge and and I don't know about, about you guys and gals, but the amount of free content that is out there now oh, to learn is so just much. insanity. I'm like, where was yeah. this stuff when I was starting? Because yeah, exactly. I just absolutely oh, the, the hills that I had to climb to get like oh, a Cisco it? iOS image on a freaking <laughs> emulator was just insane. Oh, I know. Like, Back insane. in the days before Packet Tracer was free. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have a jazz drive full of PDFs and stuff and uh, <laughs> images. Yeah, I mean, and and but you know, D- w- Dean talked about it um, a couple podcast, a couple episodes ago. It's like now nobody wants it because it's free. There's so much out there, right? So there's like this weird, ah, well, it'll be there tomorrow, you know, that sort of thing or whatever. But the amount of free content that is out there, there is almost no excuse to not at least start, at least put your foot in the pool and be like, okay, and let's see what I can do here. And that's the double-edged sword that I was talking about, right? There's sometimes too much information, which is why yeah. you need to be a little bit more focused on, yep. on what it is that you want to do. Yeah. And, and I'll second Pat what you said there too. I mean, I tell everybody, I tell all my students that the most important things you can look at to get your career going, LinkedIn and GitHub. Mm-hmm. Get a pro- those are your online yep. portfolios. Like you look at some of the computer graphics people. They have either a portfolio they bring in person to an interview or they have an online portfolio people can go to. LinkedIn and GitHub are your online portfolios that if you can send them to the interviewer ahead of time and they can see what you've done, I also recommend starting things up like a Medium blog where they can see that you've worked Bingo. through trying to do tutorials on the Microsoft Docs or the AWS Docs and you, you blogged about it. And you said, okay, I had trouble with this, I had trouble with that, but I worked through it. And that'll show how dedicated you are um, to, to, the, to the subject matter. I mean. Plus, it's also a great way to get followers. And like I said, if you have a teacher or instructor that you like, you see their courses over at Pluralsight, INE, whoever, connect with them on LinkedIn. Any good instructor worth their salt will connect with you because, number one, we always look for feedback. If somebody doesn't work for you, I want to know about it. Uh, number two, when I first started out, I didn't think I wanted the kudos, the pat on the back, saying, hey, great course. And then I had my first PowerShell course, and I got people saying, this guy's the PowerShell guru. You know how good that felt to me? That was really cool, and that's why I continue doing it. And I wanted to do more and do more courses and do, get more feedback from people. And I even want to hear like the one guy who three years ago told me that my voice sounds like a pit bull and Darth Vader had babies. And it was <laughs> nauseating to listen to. And I'm like, well, that's a new one. I mean, well, I can't change my voice. I know it's more like Barry White and Darth Vader, not a pit bull and Darth Vader. But still, I mean, I, and, and you know what? And we, we as content creators and instructors, we put ourselves out there and we open ourselves to some criticism. And we take a lot of that with just a grain of salt. We, we love the positive feedback. Constructive criticism, we love. The negative feedback, they're just being trolls. It is what it is. I could care less. I mean, you don't like it, you don't like it. It's not for everybody. But I think we all, I, I've looked at everybody who's on this channel before. I've watched a lot of your stuff. I mean, I know your company very well. Ali, I've watched some of your stuff. Or if I saw your first interview with uh, Dakota, it was awesome. Pat, I've seen some of your stuff. We all do this because we love doing it. And that is why you ought to get, if you want to get into IT, I recommend people who always have a passion for IT, even if they're gamers, but they're in another career. You know what? Take a look. You can actually look at AWS. There are gaming modules on AWS. You become a game programmer in the cloud. Look at Azure. There's different things out there that can, if you like analytical, if you like chess, look at artificial intelligence. Look at things like that. Take what you do and run with it. That's the best thing I could say. Take your strengths, roll roll with those first. Maybe if you have some gaps or weaknesses, address those 
after RF said, you, fo you laser focus on the subject matter first, and then you figure out, okay, I need some work in file systems in Linux. Okay, no problem. There's, you can find 800 YouTube channels right now that dedicated just to that, I'm sure. So, Absolutely. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions and one of the biggest things I hear all the time is I don't know anything. I don't have any experience in the field. I can't possibly get a job. I need to get certified first. And I, to me, I feel like that's the biggest myth uh, because I think anyone can get started in this field, but uh, you just have to have the, the passion and the desire to jumpstart into the field. Uh, Ali, you've been the quiet one over there. I'm going to call on you. I'm going to pick on you now. What is your thoughts on this? You get so caught up in listening to everyone else say things and you're just, you know, just like I know, there's so much great knowledge, earlier, just taking notes. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I actually um, so where I come from with being invested in computers and kind of my passion where my passion for cybersecurity comes from is I originally was going to school for criminal justice because that's where I thought that my passions uh, lay. Um, but then I realized that I really love computers. I've always really liked computers and video games. So cybersecurity was kind of the happy, you know, the happy best of both worlds in that scenario. Um, so I think, you know, I myself have a lot of certifications and I also have a degree. So I feel like I have um, kind of a perspective on both. I will say um, like Dakota's totally right in saying that you don't need any of that to get started into it, um, especially with entry level intern um, or uh, uh, freelance positions. You can often find those without having any experience because they're looking for people who are willing to kind of be invested in the projects um, who are going to have a passion for it. Um, and there's so many different ways that you can get involved in that. Um, and I think uh, a lot of the times people get this understand or this this imposter uh, syndrome that they have like, oh, well, I don't know anything and uh, I don't I don't think I can handle this. And I mean, with the amount of YouTube and the amount of just free information out there, as everyone has said, you can pick up and learn any skill at any point in time. Like there's no, um, there's no expiration on when these skill points and stuff can be gained over time. So what I think of it as is, yes, I'm not, you know, I don't know how to do this yet, but if I start this or if I go for this position, then I'll learn a lot of these things along the way. Um, it's not like you're going to be starting off in like a, a level eight position or a senior position. You're probably going to stop start off as a junior um, or an intern or something along those lines. So just taking those opportunities when they're there and um, just not being afraid of not knowing things because I mean, not knowing things is the best part about learning because then you can learn it and then you learn that you don't know anything and that you need to keep learning all the things to keep up with that. So um, that's just, that's where I come from. <laughs> you know, this whole thing about uh, degree versus certification, right? It, it, it's always seems to be binary. You, which one do you want? Ideally you want both. But I think there's more to it. It's not just degree or, or certification. Um, you know, you, you you can have, you have to have also knowledge, experience, um, things like uh, connections, network, etc. Those all also make a difference. So you can say that you don't need a degree or I'll forego those certifications, but you better have some of the other things, right? To get, you have to have a combination for your particular situation. Um, so kind of figure out where that lies and, and what you're going for, but it's not just binary. Oh, I agree. I mean, if you're going to go into cybersecurity for or cloud, for example, and you just say, I'm going to get a cloud job as an architect, but you haven't hooked up with anybody. You have no network of any kind. You've done no training. Maybe you go to get a degree in IT management, things like that. But me personally, I don't have a degree. I mean, I've got some of the college classes done. I mean, I've done most of my certifications and just practical experience over the past 25 years, but I also have a huge following. Like when I became a free agent for work about seven, eight weeks ago, I put the word out there I was looking and three days later I had a job because I connect with tens of thousands of people on a weekly basis. Um, and that's the best thing I can recommend. It's start connecting to people all the time. Get in with those YouTube creators, get in with those content creators, get in with those LinkedIn posts. I mean, start responding, get on a GitHub site, do contributions, things like that, that you don't need to be a world famous name to get a job. You just have to have some experience. I mean, just show that you're dedicated to your career. 
uh, and I don't mean dedicated to your career, the point where you ignore everything else. No, family is just as important. PTO is important, things like that. But you are investing in your career is what you're doing here. And people want to see that you're trying to do that. Absolutely. And to expand on Absolutely. that, just to... Oh. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was trying to wait till the end. Cody knows is my bread and butter. So I am, you know, for those who are tuning in, I am very much involved in the certification process and the development of INE branded certifications. And that's something we've done recently. And prior to coming to this arena, I had very extensive university experience working in university settings and being a student. So I'm so excited about this topic because I think it's read a really pivotal point right now, especially with the IT industry when we're talking about certifications. Before I would say, oh, degree, way to go. Absolutely, because that's what I was used to. But as I'm immersing myself more and more in this community and I'm hearing the conversations that are happening and I'm hearing how much we're thinking about psychology of the student and how they're taking the test and how to you know, increase this test anxiety and how hands are we're being in our approach and how do we make sure we're engaging multiple types of learners within this you know, certification setting and the logistics and the stats behind everything. There is a lot of thought going into these certifications, more yeah. than I even thought. And I think we're at a pivotal moment where we're seeing the merge because IT is getting so big, right? And we talked about all these different avenues and way to break in. This is the product of that. When you have multiple different strengths from different fields coming together in one space, you get a way more diverse, a way more inclusive, a way more um, holistic product. And I think that we're seeing that with certifications around the board. So while you might have this misconception maybe that, oh yeah, for, de for your degree, that's the way I need to be, I would highly suggest um, that you do a little, a little research and you see what's out there because let me tell you, the standard for certifications are changing and depending on what type of learner you are, if you need a more autonomous um, you know, pace style, if you wanna be able to take your time, speed up, slow down, depending on your own work schedule or home schedule, this could be a really great solution for you in a fraction of time. So it just depends on your needs, but I do wanna say both are great options and that makes me really excited to say, really happy to say. Yeah, I, I would I would agree with that. Um, and Corey, you and I seem to be cut from the same cloth. I don't have any actual degree either. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, <laughs> idiot me. My my father, who I got the IT bug from, actually worked at a local community college here, and I had a free ride to that community college, and I was just like, meh, eh, it's I was just, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I just did 12 years of, of regular school. I'll do something else. You know, it was one of those uh, things. So I, like, I agree, man. I went too young. And crazy. Uh, when, when I went too young, I was like, you know, I, I was 16 when I went off. I was too young for this. Uh, I, worked, I started off pre-med. Didn't want to do it. My, fa my father did IT for the Navy. I didn't want to do what he did, so I stayed away from IT. And then I was an optician after that. And then I'm like, okay. And then I met my wife. And, and we got married. I'm like, okay, well, I need to find some way to make some good money. And, well, I've always done IT since I was four years old. I'm, I'm 44 now. I got right. three, so Obviously, I go back to the eight and a half inch of the tape drives, 100 pound monitors, the monochrome Pac Man, the whole deal. And I got to help this job instantaneously, um, just based on what I've done over the years. And over the course of the first two years, I had four jobs, doubled, doubled, and then tripled my salary. I mean, from the time I was 20 to the time I was 23, uh, because people realized that I had it was it was ingrained, it was in my blood, but. That's you're right. It's a different story. I mean, if you want to look at degrees, I'm all for degrees. What you also have to look at is a brick and mortar degree for you. Is an online degree for you? A lot of times, online degrees are better for IT because they are more current. Sometimes, brick and mortar schools have degree programs for information systems that are so outdated. Then you look at some place like Western Governors University that has a really sharp cybersecurity information system developers track. That's not outdated at all. It's up to it's up the track, and a lot of times the certifications are part of that program as well. So, like I said, there's no right or wrong way. I think RF said it best. You have to have degree or certs or network or just hard work, but do the hard work whichever one you're going to choose. I, I think yeah. at the end of the day, like with, with IT, um, regardless of how you learn, the important thing is you have to be willing to learn. That's one. Yes. And I think this is a profession where you also have to have the ability or learn the ability to learn on your own. Be humble. Because if, if you're like, uh, if you step away for six months, uh, go on a hiatus or something, you're going to fall behind in, in a lot of areas. Uh, so done. so done. it's not like yeah. a profession where you, you got your degree, all right, I'm set, give me my job, 30 years, retirement, gold watch. It doesn't work like that. You have to keep learning and be willing to learn. 
yeah, that's a big one for me. For me personally, I'm a visual learner. So things, so platforms like INE, Pluralsight, CBC Nuggets, Udemy, wherever you want to, you know, get your, you know, your bread buttered, <laughs> if you will. Um, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a visual guy. So, and, and like I've said, look, if, if you don't like school or studying or trying to get to that next rung of the ladder, it is not for you. It's just not, mm -hmm. that's, that's the blunt truth because it moves so fast that by the time you're done with something, there's already, the industry has already moved on to something else. Yeah. So our, in your example, you, you take six months off. Ooh, that's a, that's a hard hill to climb when you come back. Like, Oh man, the whole, you know, you know, the sky was blue and now it's green. Like what, <laughs> what happened here? Oh, yeah. It was one of those things. So like, it's just so insane how fast this thing moves yeah. that you have to be on yeah. top of it. There is no standing still. I tell people all the time, there is no standing still. It's either you're moving ahead or you're falling behind. There is no standing still. So if you don't like school or don't like constantly learning to keep up with that, keep up with whatever specialty or whatever generalization you want to be in, you're going to be left behind. And then you become a, you know, get off my lawn old man once another skill you have to learn is you have to learn how to learn yeah a lot of yeah. us yeah a lot it's of a lot us, of discipline. How, Absolutely. How, many, don't have. how many of us were very good in high school or even college and just breezed through it and had i mean i had garbage study skills when i first started taking certification tests back with my nt 3.51 days yikes but i mean i had to learn how to study i mean so i actually teach my guys now to take a course on course ever called learning how to learn and you, Pomodoro techniques and do no more than half an hour. Take a 10 minute break. I mean, don't kill yourself in six hour study sessions because you're not going to retain everything. Um, it's a matter of resetting your brain. Even if you don't like school, if you can teach yourself to like to learn, it's very easy. Um, I just told you, and that's why I, if you'd known me 20 years ago, me, Corey does time management, please never happened. Thank you to my lovely OCD wife. I learned OCD techniques. No, I'm kidding here. Um, but it's one of those things that I learned how to properly manage my day. I block off my schedule during the day that if I happen to see an hour and a half free during the day that I don't have meetings, guess what? I'm throwing an hour and a half of study time in there. Uh, so I don't have to do it at night. Sometimes I can only study at night during the week. Sometimes my company gives me hours during the week where I can study. Great. It's learning where I can do and how I can do those things. You know, it's, it's also important that uh, you find which area of IT interests you because if mm -hmm. something interests you, it's not hard to learn. It's not effort. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually effort less, right? Yep. You will learn it on your own much quicker. But if something you don't like, it's it's 10 times harder to learn that. Yeah. And if you're doing paid content on top mm -hmm. of that, it's really important to make sure that you cast a wide net. Take a look mm -hmm. at different platforms because we, you know, we talk mm -hmm. about the importance of how to learn, and that is the most crucial thing. Learning becomes fun. If you're going to spend this much time and energy wow. into it, Make sure it's something you love, like we talked about, and feel that. But on top of that, make sure you're choosing to learn from someone or some company that meets your learning style needs, because yeah. they're out there. There's strictly visual stuff, you know. There's audio stuff. There's quizzes. There's hands-on lab environments. But everyone learns differently, and that's okay. Just make sure you do your research before if you are going to pay for, you know, a specific access to like course material for like at IME, for example make sure that you're learning in a way that makes sense and that's matching with the product that you're purchasing. Yeah. And like I, I tell everyone, almost every single learning mm -hmm. platform out there has some sort of free trial where you can try it before you buy it, before you commit to spending money and take advantage of those. Um, everyone learns different. There's, I've tried different learning platforms. I, I, I really tried pretty much all the major ones out there. And there's some that I just, I, I don't know, there's nothing wrong with them. They teach great but I prefer this platform's way of teaching it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a very visual learner. Like you could set a book in front of me and I won't learn a darn thing because I just, I, I'm not a book learner. I've never had been. I like getting my hands dirty and just figuring it out myself. Um, and there's platforms that utilize that. Um, and one, I think the, coolest things that nowadays people have access to is like gamified learning like mm -hmm. you know there's the hack the boxes and INE uh, INE you guys are starting to do some of that stuff as well aren't you yeah. or maybe I'm yeah. talking early but anywho um, you know yeah. try hack me and all try that kind of stuff yeah, yeah there, there's these platforms where I mean you're learning skills but you're playing a game in all honesty. And I think that's so cool. Um, and that kind of actually, tr let's tr I want to transition into my next question. And this is more for Ali and Amanda, since you two are the more cyber savvy in this, in the field. Um, for someone who is 
you know, is on the help desk and wants to advance off the help desk and go into like a cybersecurity role. What is your recommendations on how to jump off the help desk and make that leap into an actual position? Um, I think a lot of what um, what pulled me into cybersecurity was uh, so again, as we talked about, cybersecurity is a huge field. So we say cybersecurity, but it's kind of becoming like a buzzword. Um, it kind of depends on what area you want to go into. But if you're going from help desk and you want to go in maybe a, a security center or you want to do um, red team or blue team, it kind of just depends on where you want to go. But I think the biggest thing is start learning your lingo, start understanding how things work. I think um, networking and knowing how how uh, to like read packets and stuff like that, um, if you're into like if you're into forensics, it's start. It's important to start knowing how do logs work and um, being able to look at, you have logs available to you on any computer you go onto, you know, start learning how to read those and, um, you know, knowing kind of the area you want to go into or, or knowing um, what it is that the people in the position that you want uh, to do do, you know, start developing those skills. So if you want to get into hacking or, and become an ethical hacker or bug bounties and stuff like that, um, what tools are they utilizing and how can you start getting your hands on those tools? And what is in your current position? What are you doing in your current position that has a security aspect to it? Or how can you, um, how can you start asking for work that has to do with that? I know it, it depends on the position you're in, but with the position I'm in, I'm able to start saying like, oh, I want to, I'm interested in this. I want to have conversations with these people at my work about what they're doing and see if I can just sit in on what they're doing. Okay. Is that something I can maybe become a backup on or stuff, you know, stuff that helps you start making these stepping stones, making these connections and um, giving you the opportunity to kind of dip your toes in the water in different places. And then from there, you just be consistent with it. Um, and, and, you know, as we mentioned earlier, being able to kind of tunnel vision on those things and really laser focus in what you want to know or know the stuff that you need to know for that. So that if the opportunity does arise, you're the first person that they go to, or you can step into that with at least somewhat confidence of I can wiggle my way into here. So um, that's, that's where I would generally start. up so well. Um, so I have not, I'm not a cyber practitioner, but I get to work with amazing individuals um, who are just the absolute awesome SMEs in terms of our cybersecurity. Jack Reedy, Josh Mason, Alexi, Jason, like all phenomenal people. And what I've learned from them uh, beyond some of those steps is who you know, we talked about this before, but who you know matters. Um, so if you don't have a mentor currently within the cybersecurity field, I would highly recommend starting to put your feelers out. Take a look at who you really connect with. You know, when you're listening to their content online on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch, Twitter, wherever you are, take a look at who you really connect with. It doesn't ever hurt to ask and say, hey, I'd love to learn from you. What, what can you offer me? I'd love, you know, 10 minutes of your time. See what they think. Um, because the more you learn about their experiences, it might help you before you start investing down a specific you know, portion of cybersecurity, whether red team, blue team, so on and so forth. It might help you to, to get some of those answers prior to making those decisions. I would also say get your hands dirty. We talked about right now how cyber is um, a very, very a hot area to be in, and it is. And I see that a lot on LinkedIn right now with people, you know, trying to break in there, trying to get those entry-level jobs. So what I have to say to that is, based off talking to these, some of these amazing SMEs, is get in there, get your hands dirty, start talking, start using some of these platforms, some of these online labs, um, get access to those. And beyond that, stay informed it changes, this environment changes so, so frequently. And a lot of what I'm seeing right now on the certification end is this really interesting crossover between different subject matter areas in IT. So I see a lot of crossover right now between network and cloud. I see a lot of cloud and cybersecurity. And so some of these areas that we used to think were so siloed, direction that everything's moving is there's starting to be some give and take and some just intersection. And so keeping that in mind and staying just really on top of the trends and direction of your community is gonna be another really big differentiator for you. Whenever you go into those interviews or you go to speak on something, you already kind of can speak to the trend, the community, and even possibly Talk about some solutions or talk about some products that align themselves with where this transition is going so you can make those recommendations. So stay ahead of the curve, definitely network, get your hands dirty on top of what Ali just said. And I think you're going to set yourself up for success there. Actually, in, in my career, um, 
I actually went from the help desk to security, although this was like almost 20 plus years ago. Um, but for all the folks who are on the help desk and they say that they have a hard time getting out, um, you have to show that you're willing to do those things. Number one, ask, right? Ask the cybersecurity manager in your company that can I do more stuff? But it, it can also be things like, um, you know, there's a ticket that comes in, right? And you, as a, as a help desk person, you have to triage it and send the ticket off to the, to the cyber team. Uh, don't just send it. Put some notes in the ticket, right? Like, say things like, uh, here's logs. You know, I noticed this thing in the log. Maybe there's something you can look at. These little things will get you noticed after a while. Um, if there's opportunities when there's a, a, um, a bridge where you're trying to troubleshoot a problem, volunteer to be on those. Uh, talk to some of the cyber people in your, in your company and offer to do the grunt work that nobody wants to do, right? Get, get your hands dirty, get your face and voice recognized, um, show intention, and then people, you know, that, that movie, if you, if you build it, they will come. So build yourself up like that and those opportunities will come. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Uh, I, I think that's very important as far as, the, as far as finding a mentor, right? Find someone that's going to take you under their wing, sort of speak. And uh, f for me, I, I worked at um, early on. I worked at a data center. I was uh, I was an IT ops guy, right? So rebooting servers at you know at customers' requests or tape changes or uh, signing people in security badges, that kind of stuff. It wasn't anything, you know, backbreaking. Um, sorry, the heater just went on here in the basement that I'm in. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh perfect timing right uh so but then you know sort of as as i sort of grew uh, outgrew that or, or oh my god this is getting boring my eyes are bleeding you know i i made connections with the network guys right and because i knew what i wanted to do early on network was was sort of my thing and i got a taste of it and i never really let go so um you know and and i i sort of sat in on on some of their stuff like their change control calls right so hey um, you know, network guy is doing a change tonight for customer, or whatever. Uh, he's doing, you know, he's he's uh, you know doing a DR test for them, or, or setting up for one next week when they come in, or changing ports on a switch, or firewall rules, things of that nature. And so I, and I was able to sort of follow the change control that they had. Say, okay, look, he's doing ABC, he's connecting the dots, that sort of thing. And uh, that goes back to um, what other people have said here. You know, connecting the dots, uh, learning the lingo, things of that nature. And then when you, you know. The more you immerse yourself in it, the easier it becomes. And then the more, you know, you sort of, uh, you know, you've taken a flyer on it, so to speak, and you can you can go and say, okay, look, I've learned this. Here's what I've done. I've sat with, you know, Bob and networking, you know, for the last, uh, you know, six months, whatever it is, three months, six months, however long it is. He's done X amount of changes. And now I used to have this knowledge. Now I have this knowledge. It's just a progression from there. But I think a mentor is super, super important, especially to the young the young folks in there trying to trying to you know get their get their legs under them find somebody that's been through it been through all the fires and their you know their hair is a little singed right we, we've all been there um you know and, you and hair? i don't have hair anymore I know. Man. yeah about? look at that yeah um <laughs> i was gonna I, say is that, myself, what, is that what's happening here yeah it's, it's, it's ugly. And there's a lot of gray in this old dude too so that, that doesn't help but yeah I, I would say find a mentor it's been super super good to me uh, it's just and now it's sort of I'm on the long end of the stick and, and now we're sort of, you know, mentoring back. So I, I think that's a fantastic idea and it just, it shows the good, good faith. Let me chime in Absolutely. there, Pat, real quick. Uh, sorry, Dakota. The one of the things I think is one of the most fun things I, I can do at work is if I find, like you said, change control meetings or if there's any kind of workshops or client workshops where I sit with networking folks, security folks, developers, DevOps, cloud security, cloud infrastructure. I love sitting in those meetings because number one, Rule number one, if you're, not, if you're the smartest person in the room, get out and find another room. Number two, it's one of those things that if you can find different exposure to different topics, that's how I got into cloud security. I was around cloud infrastructure for so many years and I realized cloud security is pretty dang fun. So I started getting into things like Azure Sentinel, Azure Monitor. I started doing policy as code, security as code. Oh, I got to learn from devs. Um, it's one of those things that the more you're exposed to different facets, different aspects of cloud or cybersecurity or whatever, You'll learn different things from different people, and you start acclimating and bringing that stuff into your own um, your own portfolio. To say, so to say, so I mean, it's being around those kind of people is only going to be good for you in the future. Spotlight on Ellie. Uh <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry about that, Ali. But absolutely, I think that's my my biggest advice. And I can't speak for anyone else, but uh, get yourself a mentor. Reach out to you know. There's tons of YouTubers out there now. Um, 
reach out to me. I, I have no problem answering any questions. And I think you'll find that most people in this field um, are more than happy to help you know, take someone under their wing and help give you advice. Uh, it's a really friendly community. Yes, there are a few people out there that don't. But for the most part, um, you know, just reach out and ask questions. And that's the biggest thing. And then uh, the other thing, like Pat said, be a fly on the wall. If you are interested in networking, go ask the networking guys if there's something you can do to help. Or if you can, you know, just sit back and watch the next maintenance window. Or same with the security team. Um, and you, you will quickly become, uh, you'll build more skills. And then when the next position comes available, they're going to be like, well, hey, so-and-so has been with us through all these maintenance windows. Why don't we consider talking to them? Um, you know, I think that's the biggest way to help level up your skills while you're on the help desk. Uh, yeah. Would you all agree? Yeah, I, I was just going to say also, uh, I don't know if they still have it, but LinkedIn, uh, a few years ago, they had a mentorship program where if you wanted to be a mentor, you would activate that uh, feature and then people would sort of be able to contact you and, and you can help mentor other people. I don't know if they still have it, but that's another way to do it if you're in, in a part of the world where maybe you don't have access to mentors. Uh, if that feature exists, look into it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Absolutely. I'll volunteer as well. I, mean, I have a class that goes bi-weekly. I have 12 students every other week that meet, they meet for advice on going in the cloud, whether they're fresh or whether they're looking to pivot from on-prem to cloud-based, whatever. I'll open that to anybody. Anybody has questions, please contact me through LinkedIn, through YouTube, whatever. I didn't have this when I was growing up in IT. I want to make sure that nobody else has to struggle like like the rest of us, like the rest of like Pat and I and Dakota and Arp and Ali. And I, we all struggle in our own ways. And if we can help you guys out, we're just kind of... What do you want to say? Uh, what was it? Uh, pushing it forward or moving it forward? Paying it forward. I know it's Pay, a cliche it thing. It's a cliche, but you know, it's true because it only opens up more doors for you. It opens more doors for us. It's like I said, I mean, only good is going to happen out of it. And like you said, out of the few people who don't respond, Dakota Iron and me and Pat and everybody else here and a man, I'm sure we're not any of those people. Reach out to us. Let us know if you have questions. We can either help you or put you in the right direction to somebody who can help you. That's the one thing we can do. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm well, trying to help everybody I can because I I want to work less, right? There's a new there's a new group coming in here. I'm trying to I'm trying to pawn off work. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to retire <laughs> eventually, you know. Yeah. Well, so, well, Corey, while while I got you on the spotlight, I want to talk yeah. about moving from the help desk to a cloud position. I know you and I talked about this on our interview that hasn't come out quite yet. I've got a backlog of editing, but. Uh, what advice do you have people uh, for people who are interested in cloud technologies? How to start? Where where to start? Um, number one, your, your class, platform. of course, right? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I, my <laughs> class is great. But you don't have to go there. Pick a platform. If you're a Microsoft guy at heart, look at Azure. If you're a Linux guy, look at AWS. Look at GCP, and just go look up foundational skills. Take a look for your Azure, your AZ nine hundred. Take a look for AWS, your cloud practitioner. GCP has one that's equivalent as well. These are non-technical exams that can help you get started out. You have to do a little bit of memorization, and I mean a little bit. The question's only 40, the test is only 40 questions long for, for Azure. It took me nine and a half minutes when I first took it. It's very easy to get into. And I recommend people, if, even if you're in sales, like in my company, they recommend everybody even in sales and pre-sales take these beginner level certs so you can have a starting point of discussion. Um, but then just go ask questions. Find us on LinkedIn. Find us on YouTube. Join the Q&As. Join the open live sessions that we all do. Um, I encourage everyone to reach out and ask. And once you get that foundational, if you don't choose to certify, great. But if you get that foundational level, then you move on to things like administrator for Azure or um, what is it, uh, the AWS uh, Solution Architect Associate, which is very equivalent to the, uh, to the admin in Azure. Those are your help desk slash admin type level things. Then you've got your architects after that. Um, cloud security, I see here in the chat, uh, forward ID is saying, what do we, if we want to start in cloud security? Get that foundational and admin stuff done, and then move on to things like either the AZ500, which may go away shortly, I don't know. But they've also got an entire new security series of SC200, 300, 400, which is IAM, Operational Analyst, and also Azure. And there's a new one, the SC100, which just is in beta this month, which is the new cybersecurity architect which I will be starting a group study on YouTube here live in a few weeks with a few guys who are taking it, myself included. Um, 
But the biggest thing is just get exposed to it at your job, at work. If they don't have it at your job, look for volunteer opportunities. There's people out there who actually run volunteer organizations to help people out. If you're interested in supporting good causes out there, they're always looking for people to help volunteer their time. It doesn't have to be 40 hours a week. It could be an hour or two a week is all it has to be. But ways to build up your resume to move into that next role. Yeah, I would Absolutely. Sorry, Dakota, if I could just jump in here. And most of these yeah. platforms, right? Uh, most of these cloud platforms, like uh, Corey said, AWS, GCP, uh, Azure, they have free accounts. You can sign up for them, and it's not, it's not, it's very low cost, if any. And I know in the AWS world, um, there are free tier eligible, um, like machines you can spin up, EC2s, right? You know, cloud compute, spin it up, see what it looks like. Uh, you know, kind of just take it for a, a test drive, right? There's no, there's no harm in sign up for an account and at least at least get your feet wet with it like i said it's just so open right now just the 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 the, the barrier to entry right now in the it field as far as getting your hands on things is the lowest it's ever been as far as i've been in in in, in it as well cisco's the same way right with their devnet site you know they've sort of opened up to you know uh, the github world and and uh their their devops and things of that nature you can you can get um you can get a full emulator in um you know right on cisco's uh, devnet site and not have to touch a thing as far as physical gear or anything like that so you know interested in that that that's a free account sign sign up for all of it if you don't use it fine but at least sign up for it and it, it's there at your fingertips i'm sorry sorry i was gonna say can i share a little uh, industry secret here um, and a lot, I don't know why most people don't do this, but leverage your vendors, right? If you are already working in IT on a help desk, chances are your company has uh, accounts with Microsoft or Google or AWS, what, whatnot, right? Um, find out through the proper channels who they are and ask them that, hey, can I get uh, some training? Can you give me some training uh, vouchers? Uh, can I get some extended uh, accounts on, on your platform to do uh, labs and projects and whatnot. These vendors want you to learn so that you will then be the ambassador for their for their products moving product. forward. So go. it's it's in their best interest to give you that free stuff. So ask for it. Yeah, I literally just had that happen with. Um, I actually start a new job tomorrow. <laughs> so nice. tomorrow morning, That's... new job um, uh, for a local a local bank here in, in PA where I live. But. Um, yeah, I, I actually had that just happen over the weekend, right? I had a regular, I had a uh, account on Cisco's site, uh, and and they have a bunch of labs out there. I think it's called DCloud, uh, DCloud.Cisco.com, um, and certain labs and certain features aren't available to somebody that doesn't have a vendor tied to their account. So, and I just use my personal email, so obviously I'm just a nobody coming in there. Um, but I reached out to um, a, a couple of people I know that worked at Cisco for a couple other places, and we're still LinkedIn friends and stuff. And I said, hey, I said, can you throw me, you know, can you share with me, uh, I'm learning their SD-WAN product, the, the uh, Viptela. Uh, and I said, look, I, I'd, I'd like to learn, at least get a head start of what's going on in here before I start, you know, day one tomorrow. Um, and he shared uh, SD-WAN labs with me. So. All I had to do was ask. That was literally yeah. it. It was not a cent out of my pocket. All I had to do was ask and say, "Hey, look, man, you know, we worked together for a while." Blah 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 blah. And he said, "Yeah, no problem." And like a half hour later, I had a full blown SD WAN lab with step by step and, and the whole leverage of, of Cisco's cloud right at my fingertips. All you got to do is ask. Yeah. And it's one also other good thing. To, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, please go ahead. I, I interrupt you. The one thing I can tell you too to look at. Um, Grew, uh, one of the cloud platform trainers out there, like a cloud guru, like Linux Academy, and like INE. Hello, so I had my son in the background there. He's okay, he's cool. Um, <laughs> what I can say is a lot of them have cloud sandbox. I know INE is testing out their labs now. Um, mm -hmm. So there are places you can go do cloud sandbox stuff, even without getting that free uh, Azure or free AWS. I recommend you get them um, because there's certain things cloud sandboxes can't do, uh, like a lot of uh, load balancing and things like that because you can't pass public information through private networks, things like that, because of what their lockdown policies are. But you can stand up limited sandbox sessions to start practicing. Whether you want to practice DevOps, whether you want to practice infrastructure as code, whether you want to practice stand up in, standing up uh, networking uh, and scale sets, things like that. Those options are out there. Yeah, I was saying that, uh, and when you do that, you can also sometimes pit vendors against each other. For example, uh, you yep. know, there's That's situations where <laughs> there's a situation where you know you're heavy in Azure and maybe heavy in AWS. Uh, I had uh, 
Oracle Cloud, which most people don't hear much about, mm -hmm. they want to get their foot in the door. So you know, we gave them a, a small area to work with, uh, a workload. And I said, well, if you want us to do more, get my team trained up. So a couple of weeks later, they, they, they uh, set up this eight-part um, eight workshop completely free for, for, for my team, right? If you don't ask, you don't get. When COVID first hit, Oracle did something huge. They made all of their certifications and training available to everybody yep. for free. And that's why there were so many certs that came available from Oracle mm -hmm. over the past two years, because honestly, before that, I mean, I've been in cloud for years, but before that even hit, I really didn't even know what was out there for Oracle. And all of a sudden, boom, here are literally five different certs that you can get. I'm like, I want to take this. Why not? And building on that just a smidge, and I can tell you, it depends on the company, obviously, but there is room for like beta testing. When we're talking about certifications in particular, we beta, because we, we want to make sure we're producing something that's representative of the skill set that we're embodying and of what our actual clients want to know. So a lot of times, too, you can also partake in beta programs. If you become a more frequent beta or part of the beta teams, for example, that can also lead to additional opportunities, additional resources. So some of those learning paths that we talked about are access to different platforms, things like that. So maybe some super secret sandboxes I don't know about. Um, all of that can come just by being not even just an advocate, but one of those individuals who's just highly engaged with a specific platform or specific product. So longevity and lifelong learning, we mentioned that again, and it keeps on coming up as this theme here. The more you invest in your education by taking advantage, saying, hey, do you have this opportunity communicating? The more likely you are to be one of the first people that those companies are going to reach back out to and say, hey, we're doing this new thing. We'll give you this access for a year as a, as a thank you for helping us in this to test this, to give you your feedback. But look for those opportunities too so the more you do those the more likely you are to establish a relationship and get some really awesome stuff as a as a benefit of that as a result of that sorry i was muted there absolutely um this has been such great advice um the, the next thing i kind of want to move on to is how to market yourself in the job marketplace um a lot of people you know they they, they figured out how to get the training they need and stuff like that but what is the you know what are some tips you guys have to market yourself to potential employers whether it's linkedin resume interview tips uh, what is some advice you guys have so uh -oh. I have magic three words on this, which is show your work. Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, um, it, whether it's a blog, a website, if it's Twitter, social media of some sort, show your work. Show people what you're working on. Because not only is that going to re-emphasize um, what you're learning and help you um, really solidify that knowledge, but you're also sharing it with other people, which is what you're looking for when you're looking at how to troubleshoot these things. These people are looking up the same things. So show your work. And it's really scary when you first start doing it and you don't know if anyone's looking at it, but not only are you working on your communication skills when you're doing that, but you're also developing your own portfolio that then you can turn around and have these people look at as a part of your resume or um, as a part of your experience. Like I participated in these GitHub repositories or I participated in um, these events and um, I solved these problems and here's how I did it. And that not only shows your communication style, it shows that you're very passionate about what you do and it's really cool to have a portfolio of the things that you've worked on. I think Ali just summed it up best, show your work. Like I was gonna say, you know, I said it before, GitHub, LinkedIn, Medium Blog, whatever. Show your work is what it comes down to. I mean, you and I, Dakota, you and I did the LinkedIn profile review a few weeks ago. We had a lot of fun doing that. But the bottom line is, I don't care what your profile looks like. As long as it shows what you've done, that's what matters. I mean, it, it'll give us an idea of what you've been exposed to, what you're doing, and what you want to do. I mean, I, I want to hear everybody else has to say as well. I mean, my big thing is GitHub and LinkedIn and Medium blog, but I always said it best. Show your work. That's what you can do. Yeah, on, on that topic of show your work, the, another way you also show your work is, if you're already in a company, um, you know you can you can look at like you know best what's missing in the company, right? Whether it's documentation or a new process or something or a piece of technology, whatever it is, you know best what's lacking. Um, on your spare time, do a little demo or a pilot or build something on the side, and then go to your manager or the manager that that would be um, affected by it and say, "Hey, look, I, I built this thing, and I think it's going to save us a lot of time to rebuild servers in the future." Or I did this. Uh, it's it's a tool that will diagnose things that normally takes us a long time. 
this is also part of show your work, but you're showing it internally. Mm -hmm. And again, when you do that, trust me, as a manager, I love people who go out of their comfort zone and then they do stuff. Even if it doesn't work, the fact that they went ahead and they showed that initiative, that's that's golden to any manager. Yeah, those little solution accelerators can go a long way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, personally, I'm a blog guy. So uh, again, I'm in Ali's camp of show your work. It just happens to be that I'm through a blog. Um, but most of my blog is just, you know, certs that I've studied for, right? It's just basically step-by-step -step notes on whatever, you know, whatever that particular cert or whatever that chapter is that I'm, that I'm learning for. So if, if I know I can take in the information, right? Again, I'm a video guy. Taking the information, then actually portray it into steps and or a process on a blog with something that's hard proof that you can give to somebody that truly means that i know the material and I, I should say if they could follow and get the same results or the, the the winning formula then that means i truly know said material so uh, personally I, I i'm a blog guy as far as that you know showing your work in that format um but yeah to sh show your work is pretty much it that 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 was great ali you hit that you know spot on yeah there's one more thing I could wanted to kind of contribute to this besides the, sh the show you works. I think that was great. I was actually, um, <laughs> I had thought about that. The, the two people that popped into my head, Ali, when you said that was Brooke Seahorn and Mike Pfeiffer, because that is something that they are just die hard about. Make sure you have some type of, you know, portfolio repo to pull from. So I love that you said that. I, you just hit the nail on the head there. Um, the other one that I would say I usually tell anyone transitioning to the field, so for those specific transitioners into cybersecurity or networking or data science or cloud, um, level up. That's something I try and, and live by. Level up in every capacity. Level up in terms of showing your work. Level up in terms of when you answer some of these questions, practice. If you have a mentor, if you have maybe someone you're studying for a cert with or taking a course with online or whatever, interview practice totally helps. But the key to that is leveling up by adding your unique twist. We talked about the importance of soft skills, right? Because, you know, if you get as much exposure as you need, you keep on wanting to learn, you stay committed, and you have that grit and that drive to this lifelong learning that is the IT field, right? You got to go beyond that. So use those opportunities when you're in an interview to really showcase what it is that's missing, usually via soft skills. Beyond knowing your community and having those solutions like I've talked about, and really thinking ahead. I think when I'm interviewing individuals, that's something I'm looking for is, are you teachable? Are you eager to learn? And have you given me some sort of indication through some sort of storytelling or evidence to show that you can handle whatever it is I throw at you and that you've got this passion and this commitment? So level up your answers by being true to yourself and really letting those showcase your strengths beyond just what's written on the job description. 100%. Uh, absolutely. And I think that is really great advice. And, you know, we were just talking about marketing yourself and let's go to the next step. Okay. Once you've actually got that interview, what is some advice you guys have for kind of getting over the fears of that first initial interview and, you know, other advice you have to really shine during your interviews? I'll kind of take I'll, that one. There, go for it. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, I, I personally, I, it, it seems to be like the interview process now in today's age is sort of broken. Uh, I think there's way too many interviews out there for yes. for what for what is actually going on. Like, who needs literally five or six interviews? Like, if you don't if you don't know that I'm the guy or gal after the second, maybe the third, depending on what you're applying for, you're just wasting everybody's time with four, five, six, seven, up to ten interviews. That's just crazy. But. Um, Personally, I think that at least the first one, you sort of have to let your personality shine because, again, it comes back to that EQ versus IQ discussion as far as, okay, can I put this guy in, or gal in front of a customer, right? Is he is he going to embarrass me or is he going to make me feel like a thousand bucks, right? It's one of those things. So I think personality is is counts for a, a lot you know, in the, today's world. You get to the second third interviews that's where your technical stuff starts to shine but your first interview is sort of like okay it's probably it's probably with somebody in hr or an hr assistant right making sure you're passing backgrounds and you know you're not a serial killer <laughs> that's sort of thing so um i think i think it's a lot of that so what's wrong with that yeah right exactly um hey whoever yeah you gotta have a hobby out right? There for everybody right somebody out there for everybody but um uh i think it's you know the first interview is definitely um a personality 
background check, if you will, and then you know, kind of just have a talk with them, like you're having you're having beers or you're out to dinner, that sort of thing. People people respond to that. I find people respond to that quite quite well and say, yeah, hey, you know, this guy Pat, he was good in the, in the first interview. I'll pass him on to the hiring manager, and that's where your technical nitty gritty technically happens. Second, third interviews. Mm-hmm. I, I always like uh, interviews. <laughs> it's, it's always fun to, to go through them. I, I can spend like hours talking about this this segment. Um, one thing I will give advice to people if you know people who sometimes are very introvert in, in uh, IT and they, they don't they're not always able to communicate very well with people. Um, practice, apply for jobs and uh, just practice. even if you don't get the job, try to be better at, at everything like, you know just like everything else put your reps in. Um, but I would also say one of the biggest thing in interviews is, and this might sound like contradictory advice, it's don't make the interview about yourself. That's right. Normally interview is about you, right? But don't make it about you. Make it about the hiring manager and the company and what they need. There's a reason why they're interviewing you because something's lacking, someone's lacking. They're hoping you can fill that void, right? So figure out in the conversation what it is that they want, what is it they need, and then flip it to, okay, well, this is how I can solve this problem for you. And if you can't, well, then that's not the right job for you in the first place, right? So, so make it about them. And, um, you know, as the interview progresses, uh, if you can get it from a part where it's just question, answer, question, answer, to more of a conversational flow of things, then you know you're on the right track. And part of that happens by you asking them good questions. It's not just answering, ask them good questions and then follow up with how you can solve those things. So that's probably the best advice I can give you for interviews. I'll, I'll tack on that one too. I mean, the biggest thing that I like to do when I have interviews and I've been doing these things for, I was an independent, I was an independent consultant for years, 17 years. And I've done interviews like crazy. Um, you're right. Conversational is best. So if you can do that, you know, you're doing something right, but also do your research ahead of time. Hmm. Have a list of questions in your head that you want to ask them about the company, about the work that you're going to be doing, about the work that you can do to help them out. How can I add, know, know how you can add value, but then ask them also based on the skills that you bring, how do they see you adding value? And then kind of respond to that when they tell you this, this, and this, maybe you can respond to say, well, you know what? I like that idea, but I can go a step further and do this for you. And you're right. I mean, I will try and turn an interview conversational within the first five minutes um, just because it makes it more fun. I mean, I, I have fun with interviews. I mean, just I'll do 10 a day. I love doing them, whether I'm interviewing people or they're interviewing me. Um, but you're right. I see here, Mike says, I struggle interviews. There are some interviews are just like talking to a brick wall. They're kind of like the guy from Ferris Bueller. 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 Yeah, those are tough. You're going to run into those one out of every 10. It happens. Maybe one out of every three. Who knows? But it does happen. So, um, but learn to have fun with it. I mean, in, in our city, I think practice. Have a mentor help you out. There's my son. Hello again. Um, but I have someone who can help you out and mentor you doing interviews. I mean, everybody wants help. Reach out. We'll, I'm probably going to do a podcast here in the future where we start doing some interview techniques uh, and how you guys go through that stuff as well. So uh, I'm sure Dakota and I would probably have a lot of fun doing that one. So Absolutely. Any Anytime. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here as well. So I used to teach at Auburn University uh, an LBAR class 2010. It was a college or career class, and one of the things we focused on is interviewing. And I really loved – figuring out the differences between interviewing a different field. So I would highly encourage everyone who's listening right now to be jotting down notes because it looks different for everything. So we talked about coming within with solutions. That's, I think, a really great idea. Um, practicing with either a mentor or a colleague, absolutely awesome as well. You definitely want to make sure you do that. Coming with questions, my biggest thing. Um, I want to make sure whenever I go into an interview that I'm prepared and I have, if you need notes, take notes, write them down, totally fine. But have that conversational feel, and the way you get that is just being authentic, being yourself. Um, if you're applying for the job, there's a good chance that you feel like I've got what it takes based off this job description. So let yourself kind of just take a minute to breathe and and feel that empowerment and say, okay, I've got this. Now I'm going to interview them as much as they're interviewing me, which is why I like that flipped yeah. script kind of deal. You're asking them questions, you're getting to know their problems, and then marketing yourself in a way that you're you're being that problem solver. So I would highly just recommend having that mindset as well that was told to me by one of my mentors is you interview them as much as they interview you because you also want to make sure that you're being set up with a company that mirrors your values and your mission because when, you're, when you have that alignment, 
you create passion. When you create passion, you do a lot better work. You enjoy the work that you do every day and everybody benefits from the output of that. So also make sure you're flipping that script, that script and you're really just representing what it is that you want out of your career and that wherever you're going mirrors that as well. I'd love to add to that too. One of the things that I found um, recently, I was on a panel for a couple of interviews for people on my team. And what I noticed in my team was we weren't so much looking for the technical skills because even though it was a really technical position, we already had the resume that explained all of the experiences. So we kind of could gather from that um, a lot about the technical part of it. What we were looking for is who was going to vibe really well with our team, who would be able to work with some of our personalities that we have. So that just kind of seconding that personalities, everything when it comes to these interviews, because I, in my interviews, you know, I know that the positions kind of like we talked about earlier, the position I'm going for, I don't have all the skill set for, but I'm going to show you that I will figure it out and that I have the personality of someone who's going to go get it and figure it out. Um, and uh, not to mention, you know, if you're in IT, there's a really good chance you're going to be on with a bunch of nerds. So being able to, you know, you no know, slips hey, good hey. jokes in there every now and then get people to laugh at you. That's that's my goal. What's wrong with nerds? Nerds Nothing. are the best. <laughs> <laughs> I think at the at the end of the day, like when you when you're at um, at interviews, um, just just relax, just enjoy it. Yeah. And I know sometimes it's hard to do because maybe you absolutely want this job and you or you need this job, but you know, stressing up and being all wound up is not going to help you. Just relax, enjoy the interview, and if you don't get it, it's okay. There's plenty of other jobs out there. We, uh, you know, there's there's more demand for jobs than there are to fill it. So you have the upper hand. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Um, well, that's all the questions I had. I think it's time to give away a one year free membership to INE. What do you guys think? Oh, yes. Yeah, we we this was amazing. We had over 500 entries uh, for this in the last two days, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the winner on screen. There's only one winner. Drum roll, please. The winner is Gregory Dawson. Yay! All right. Ooh, yeah. Awesome. Congrats, Gregory. <laughs> Welcome to the INE family. Yes. So we'll Gregory. Enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. Gregory, I'm going to give your information off to the folks at INE. Give them a couple of weeks and they will be reaching out, I'm sure, and uh, giving you information on that new membership. Uh, and a big shout out to INE for uh, helping me do this. Um, you know, Amanda over at INE team is amazing. And the whole INE team, I, I really stand behind them and what they do. I, I, I really like how they've been involved in the space. And um, I'm just so glad they, you know, gave, you know, gave me the opportunity opportunity to give away free training to hopefully help someone advance their career. So Gregory, if you're in the chat, congratulations. Um, and I also kind of want to take the moment to open up to the chat and see if anyone in the chat has any questions. Um, you know, and hopefully um, you guys don't have any time constraints. We can, you can stick around and answer a few questions. But yeah, um, I'd like to open up to the chat. If you guys have out there have any questions at all about the IT field, um, now's the chance to get them answered by these wonderful industry experts here we have. So, for anybody I ask, say, yes, this they, is uh, my hair. Questions are coming what? in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I did see that earlier someone had a question about how it's hard to find entry level positions that aren't actually entry level. Um, apply That's for them anyway. One. Right yes. now, the industry is so in need of people. You just need to apply and see what happens because you yeah. never know. We, not in my team specifically, but I know in our organization, we've taken people who might not have fit all of the uh, minimum uh, requirements, but they showed that they are ready to be thrown into it trial by fire. And, you know, we need people. So you never know what you're going to get. And, and it's just, you know, you should never be afraid to apply for something. A lot of times Absolutely. it's the wish list too they have. I mean, they, they may list, I mean, I've seen entry level security positions with requiring a CISSP. Come on. We all know it's not <laughs> yeah. going to happen, but you know what? I mean, it is what it is. I mean, if to me, if I meet roughly half of the requirements, I'm applying. That's what I'm going to do. 
Um, because it's a wish list. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, yeah. it's a good luck find someone who has everything. If they want, if they have everything, they better triple the salary right now. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. right. it doesn't happen. Yeah. And if Absolutely. they don't have, if you don't get it, and it's something you want to do, reach out to those people on LinkedIn. That's what I. I've done before. I applied for a, a security operations center position. I didn't get it. So I reached out to the hiring manager after the process was done. It's like, hey, I get that I didn't get it. That's great. I just want to know in the future, what are you looking for? Because I really want to do something like that in the future. And you will find like they were ecstatic. Like, hey, thanks so much for applying. Here's what we're looking for. Let me know. And it became a mentor. I mean, it's just little things like that that you can do that will only help you in the future um, gain the skills or at least an idea of the skills that you need to go through with it. And, and it makes your name stick out. Next time there's an available opportunity, it makes your name really pop out there too. Absolutely. And I think I'd be remiss not to say anything about this and take an opportunity to say this, but you know, when we talk about meeting all those requirements before applying and, and the need is just do it. Um, I know women in general, statistically speaking, tend to be more critical of making sure they meet every single checkbox. So women out there might be listening right now, breaking into the IT world, apply. Just don't apply. be a statistic. We don't need be a more statistic. Of you. Absolutely. Yes. We yep. definitely need more diversity in this industry. So I want to take a moment just to say go for it. What do you got to lose? Absolutely well, nothing. Give it a go. I also want to I also want to add one thing. I mean in, in IT you have also a lot of people who are new immigrants who are from other countries. Uh, English is not their first language and they're often very shy about applying to things. They might have the best uh, technical abilities, but they're shy about uh, the, the, the verbal or written requirements. To those folks, I would also say, don't worry, just just apply to it. Um, there's, there's other ways to get around that. And if you don't work and have those communication practices, you're not going to get better anyway. So yes, the theory well, is I'm, just apply. <laughs> I like talking to people who are not from the US and have different accents, different languages, language barriers here and there. Number one, you can tell if they've gotten where they're at in the United States with the language barrier, that means they're they're tough, mm-hmm. they're passionate, they know what they're doing, and they want to get there. So yeah. to me, I don't care. Honestly, when I look at resumes, I don't look at names. I look at skills. And I can teach soft skills within reason. I can't teach um, passion. I can't teach ability. I mean, you know, things like that. I mean, to me, I don't care if you are from any one of the seven continents. To me, send me your resume. Well, let's see where we can put you. You know what I mean? And that's uh, that just shows that you that you want to do things. And I'm all for that. Absolutely. We had a question come in here from Mike. Um, uh, if you uh, uh, do, you still have to do an interview with HR for higher up uh, IT roles the majority of the time. Yeah. Uh, my my opinion is yes. Um, you almost always still have to sit down with HR and go through that. What was your guys' experience? It might not be as detailed as like an entry level position because you're starting out, but chances are you're going to talk to either an internal recruiter or an internal HR person. It might only last 15 minutes, but you're going to talk to somebody. Right. Absolutely. It's at least a screen at that point. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Well, we need those too. We need those yeah. filters. I, I, that's what I kind of think of them as is we're trying to see exactly kind of what you said earlier, Pat, of you're going to meet with somebody in that first round that's kind of just like a buffer to make sure you got that those minimum skills there, those minimum soft skills or technical skills, and then you're on your way to speaking with people who'd be on your team, people you'd be working with on a adjacent team, the individuals that, you know, going to be your supervisor or boss, but yeah, definitely. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, next question here uh, from D. Win. If you have a self-taught cert, will this get you into IT? I'm assuming this person probably has taught themselves and then gone out taking the test and got certified. Um, and I'm just going to chime in, and I think that makes no difference. I actually think it's better if you teach yourself because you've learned on how to learn, you know, learn these skills in the IT field. Mm-hmm. But what's everyone else's uh, take on this? That is literally how I got into tech. So yes, you can absolutely get it can absolutely get you into IT. I was working at, in a courthouse beforehand doing clerical work. I was a judicial service specialist, which is just a really, really fancy way of saying clerk. So I was doing mindless paperwork, but and I just didn't want to do it anymore. And I wanted to get into security. So I went out and I taught myself security from the ground up doing the uh, going through with the CompTIA uh, Sec Plus. And that's what got me my first job in IT. I didn't go straight into security, but it showed that I have enough knowledge and drive to get to where I'm at. So yes, absolutely. That is, I think certs are a great way to start or education is a great way to start. I mean, the bottom line, the, the bottom, you know, common denominator there is that you're learning, right? Mm -hmm. 
And like Absolutely. we talked about earlier on, it's, the certs are not the end all be all, right? I mean, it's it's very important. You should get it, but it it matters even more if you're doing things like consulting, where on a on a on a company's tender there are specific requirements about certification. For those, you need their certs. But but if if it's just a, a nice to have thing. Um, yeah, absolutely. You can you can self learn or get taught by someone else. It doesn't matter as long as you know how to Focus do it. Focus on the skills. Yeah, exactly. I will say yeah, some of the value that I've seen, um, even if you don't choose to get the certification, I'm finding depending on where you go and what product you choose, there's a lot of time and energy spent to the build up of taking that cert. So I think some mm -hmm. of the value lies in the the pre cert experience, if you build, depending again on where you go. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of that knowledge that you're getting from industry experts along your cert journey as you're teaching and you're watching this information, and a lot of the different tools that they're using that you might not have come across, you know, if you did this or that, I think that's part of the enriching experience. So exactly right so if you decide not to take this or it's totally up to you but i think there's immense value that you can get by just digesting the content to even get there so take that into consideration too yeah, one, one fun interview question i always ask people when i look at the resumes and there's a cert it's like oh so you have an mcsc um from back in the day let's say uh it's like tell me about your lab that you have at home how did you build it right <laughs> that is more valuable than just having a, a, a uh, a certification where you're just a paper certified and not a hands-on and, certified. And how much luckier do people have it nowadays? They don't have to build a home lab. It's all available in the cloud. All virtual. I love it. Oh. I love it. I love it. You, and I, you know, I though, I'm, I'm, I'll go ahead. No, I was just going to say this. I think, I think sir, uh, to, 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 um, uh, to mimic what other people have said here, I think certs uh, at an entry level, I think is good. I think uh, it depends on the place that you work, right? Mm -hmm. I think I think various industries find certs at a different level of value, right? So, for example, right? For example, again, Cisco guy, uh, newly Palo Alto guy, and future AWS guy. Um, I think you know when I was doing the Cisco stuff, right? Not every shop is a Cisco shop, so they don't care about your CCNA, they don't care about your yeah. CCMP or whatever, right? So. I th well, I should say, you know, if, if you're in the finance sector or whatever, you know, those customers aren't going to care that you have a CCNA. Like that's not their that's not their avenue. Right. Right. I think where certs come into play is more of like your vendors. Right. Your MSPs, your ISPs. Right. Because then the more people you have certified in X, whatever it is, the Part better your levels. discounts are with their vendors, right? So yep. that had, there's a company interest yeah. there of like, okay, look, I have three CCIEs on staff. I can now have Cisco Gold partnership with with Cisco, right? And then obviously that your your gear gets cheaper and things of that nature. So, but for me, certs have always been personal because they belong to me. They're they're mine. So when I get sick of said job and move, the cert comes with me. So you know that sort of thing. So you have to sort of look at the cert game as far as okay, you sort of have to know your niche or you know, take a general one, right? The the uh, the trio, as we call it, net plus, a plus, sec plus, right? From CompTIA, and see where that see where that opens the door, and then say, okay, look, you know, and that that's gonna that's gonna be a selective process of which jobs you apply for, depending yeah. on your actual cert goals, because some certs mean more than others in, in certain business vectors. This is the fact. Uh, absolutely. And I heard this once a while ago, and uh, it, it's, I don't necessarily agree with it, but it is kind of true. Certifications aren't necessarily for your current position. They're they're building your skills and showing that you actually have the knowledge to advance your career into that next level position. You know, it's great to build all these certifications for your current job, but you're going to learn that knowledge anyways. Where the certification really carries weight for you in your career journey is when you're ready to take the next step, you are have those certifications to help back up all your prior work experience i believe yep. so the next question i think this is a really important one because i'm a big believer in soft skills in the field are soft skills and culture fit more or just as important as being a uh, being technical on the job it's at least 50 50 and some some jobs it may go higher where it's like two-thirds one third yeah. because yeah. if you're with if, if, if you have all the skills in the world but you've got a group that you work with that you just can't get along with, or you're just completely different than them. That makes your job tough. I mean, or if if you can present, but you don't have the technical, so it, it's a, it's a balance. Like where I'm at now, fit is everything. We go through and do multiple. I wouldn't say culture fit, but team fit interviews because we would see, like I said, if we're gonna vibe with those people, if we're gonna do very well working with them. Um, 
So it, it all depends. I mean, but a lot of places, it's a matter, of, I would say it's at least as important. It also depends on which uh, stage of your career you're in. Um, certain yeah. areas, especially like uh, a lot of the upper managers, directors, and VP level, it's it's not even about technical. It's almost 100% about uh, your soft skills, your ability to lead people, and then how you fit with that culture. Um, at that level, everyone that you're interviewing, they know how to get the stuff done. So depends on what level uh, that the ratio changes. Yeah. Kevin just said it there. Yeah, executives and VPs, you need good soft skills. You You've go. got to have good verbal communication. That's what it is. And IT industry is a very agile community. As we talked about, things are always changing. And when you have an entire field that is continually changing and advancing and growing, mm -hmm. you have to have a team around you, one that's being will is willing to adapt, two that does really well under pressure because well, welcome to it. Sometimes it changes and you have to completely, you know, learn a new tool or learn a new skill. So having someone on your team with those soft skills that you know can handle it and not even handle it, but handle it well in a in respectfully and gracefully is so important. I would personally for me with my team, I would much rather have somebody I know culturally that I can would adapt well and would fit well that I could teach the technical skills to. I would much rather invest in that from my specific perspective. Yeah, that's one thing about uh, about having a, a superstar who's a jerk. Uh, it's it's worth keeping that person. <laughs> no company keeps them around. It's not no, worth the toxicity yeah. that, that, that adds to the nope. team. Okay. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I can personally attest to this because really with my first job and my current job, I got hired. I was I, And the manager came back and told me, you weren't the most qualified person that applied the job for this job. We hired you because... You, we could tell you're a good people person. You can communicate well with others, and you just had those good soft skills. Um, you know, I, my current job, I'm the director of network operation, and I keep in mind I'm a college dropout. I currently only have still my A plus certification, and I've only had three years of experience in the field. But, and I was going up against you know college graduates with PhDs and people that had way more technical skills. But what's convinced my boss to hire me is my ability to communicate. You know, he asked me to describe a problem and how I troubleshoot it. And I just the ability I could present during the, you know, during my interview, he was just impressed that I would be a good fit in my small organization and I get along. And, you know, here I am over a year later, still here to say it. So uh, soft skills are huge. Space. It really is. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, I, I agree. Well, we don't currently have any more questions, so I think it's a great time to wrap up this wonderful information-packed live stream. I can't thank all of you enough for joining uh, today. Um, I have links to everyone here, um, all their uh, either social or uh, YouTube channels down in the description. Definitely everyone here in the uh, in the video, take a chance to go find them, uh, go watch their amazing, great content and support them as well. Uh, does anyone else have some any closing remarks uh, before we wrap up the stream today? Oh, I just want to thank uh, you, Dakota, for, for setting this up. It's always nice to meet uh, new people in, in our little community. Definitely. So it's great to meet all of you guys. Definitely. What they say about you is not true. Thank yeah, you so fun. much. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I love bringing other people's opinions and advice into the field. I'm definitely not a know-it-all. Um, and that's one thing. I'll never be a know-it-all at anything. Um, so I like to surround myself with other people who have great knowledge and experience. Um, and because everyone has a different story to share. And uh, as you guys have shown today, it's IT is really possible for anyone who is has the motivation and the passion to be in mm -hmm. IT. Um, it is really an achievable uh, position to work in. So, um, again, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, and I hope to have at least uh, any, any of you are always welcome on the channel. So anytime you guys feel like it, come feel free to come on back. <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in again today. If you haven't already, make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you've got value from it and make sure and subscribe. And until next time, take it easy. Thank you.